friends and welcome back to part two of this recoloring tutorial. Today we're actually going to finish up our recolors and I'll show you how easy it is to make different color combinations for your own custom needs for your berry sims or whatever else you like to do. If you recall in our last part we left off after creating our batch action and getting all of the different colors um, in the Noodle Sorbet Remix palette. So we're going to pick up where we left off and figure out what to do from there. The other thing that I like to do is I like to open up one of the original swatches that it's really easy to see the different coloring. I think I'm going to go ahead and open up this one. I like that the seat and all of that stuff is in purple compared to the brown. The other reason I did the black is sometimes the computer easily picks up on the black and so um, I might also open up this one just in case it's helpful. So then what I like to do is take a, so I take this swatch and then I take whichever one I'm going to be actually pasting things on. So I don't know if I'll do this one. Oh, where's my base? There's my base. Because that still looks really gray. So I think I'm going to use the new white. So it's essentially run the white twice. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to control A to select all, control C to copy it. And I'm going to come paste it over the top of this. So you'll notice in this swatch it's really hard to tell what I would need. So I'm going to hide it, but it's still right there. And then I can come down here and I'm going to select, let's see, there's a few ways you can do it. So this is the magic wand tool. And so right now it's set to 30, I might need to adjust that, but I can come through and just click all the things. Sometimes it's easier to use the rectangle tool and select things and then delete the parts that you don't want. Um, or sometimes it's easier to just select the things that you want deleted and delete them from this layer. So I think I might do that. So I'm actually going to copy this just so I have a backup. And I have the top layer selected, but I'm only viewing this. So I can see oh, this is purple, so I'm going to zoom in with my rectangle tool selected and just select out. That's a little big. Some of these I don't know how important it is to be perfectly accurate because they give themselves some space, but I'm going to delete that. So you'll notice if I go re-highlight that, I don't think that worked. Let's try that again. There we go. I don't know. When I hit delete it didn't actually. So now it's deleted from this so I can see through it. Right, if I hide that. I'm pretty sure this purple sliver does nothing, so I'm gonna just leave it, but I'll, I'll test that to make sure it's true. So let's um, go ahead and delete this little purple swatch thing. Now I don't trust that it is working. Maybe I have to rehide it. I swear I didn't used to need to do that, but maybe for deleting I have to. Okay, let's try the, I'm gonna have to go back to this because I need to select from here. Um, that's kind of grabbing some stuff, but let's go ahead and try to grab out this middle stuff. So I'm holding down shift to get some of these different color variations. It might also have been easier to up the tolerance to a higher number to be a little bit less picky about the colors, but that's good enough. It works. So lower numbers are going to be like, it has to be this exact shade and higher, higher tolerance would be like, oh, they're all shades of purple. Let's select them all. So with that selected, I'm going to come back up and delete that. And then to deselect, I do control D, but my um, keyboard, all of the letters have been rubbed off from like overuse. I really need a new keyboard. So a lot of times I hit the wrong key because I can't see them. They're rubbed off. 
Okay, so what else? I still have all of this. So I think for the most part, I'm gonna use the rectangle tool. selection because I want to get rid of that little bit there and then I'm gonna come up here and delete that so sometimes it's a longer process and it might depend on how picky you are sometimes it might be easier to just use this tool and actually I'm thinking it might be for some of this So we're looking pretty good. Let me hide this and see if there's any leftover purple. So for some things, then it might be easier to just come in with the erase tool. Oops, that was delayed. Oops. Let me make that harder. Just see if I missed anything. You could also use the rectangle tool for some of that. Okay, I think I grabbed everything of importance. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I need to make sure that this swatch has colors in at least two corners or like parts of it. So notice there's white, from this swatch in all of the four corners so I don't have to do anything special. I'll show you an example where I did need to do that. So I'm gonna do a control A, control C to copy that and I'm gonna open. I'm still in the recoloring workstation so let me go find the and I'm gonna just pick one of these. I was kind of working with the green before so I'm gonna do that any color and I'm gonna control V to paste it now as long as you had something selected in at least two I guess I should say opposing corners so you need something here and here or here and here it should snap to the right location if not again I'll show you what to do in that case okay so I think that's what I want I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this and do a save as which you can go file save as and I'm gonna call this test because I wanna go look and see what it looks like before I do anything else. So let me go to Sims 4 Studio. This was the original test. Let me go ahead and import this new test. And just make sure that my edges look clean. Like I said, there's usually a lot of grace in this, so it doesn't have to be completely perfect on the edges for the most part, and it's gonna look pretty good. And I think that looks fantastic. I am happy with that recolor. So I am going to go ahead and close this. For this, I'm going to save this as a PSD. So notice the layers are not flattened. It's a Photoshop and I'm going to call this paste because if I need to come back in and grab it, I spent all that work deleting the parts I needed to and now it's at least saved. And this can be helpful for if I want to do um, different colors. So actually, let me show you that real quick before I show the next part. So we open up that paste. Let's say that I wanted to create a chair that has pink legs. And let's say this purple. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and take both of those swatches and paste them on top of this PSD. Okay. So remember that this swatch here was for the legs. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to hold down control and click on this little image and it's gonna automatically select everything that it is. So I'm gonna come up to that 
and I'm going to, with the purple selector, there's a couple ways, you can either copy the other thing, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete out the legs on the purple swatch, because I had said I wanted a purple seat, and I'm gonna put that on top, so that when I unhide the pink, now it should have pink legs and a purple seat. And I'm gonna go ahead and flatten the image real quick. And make sure you choose D3 DDS, because it was set to the Photoshop from before. And I'm gonna just call this pink couple. Save. Okay. Make sure you come back up here and unselect the flatten so you can make different color combinations if you want. So let's add a swatch and I'll show you what that looked like. So now I have a pink and purple swatch. So usually this would be something I would make for my own game of certain color combinations that I want for my particular sims, but that's how you can do that pretty easily. And now that I have essentially this cutout ready to go, it's gonna be so easy to make it any, any sort of color combinations that I want. I just have to pull the colors that that action created, copy and paste them in, and then use this cutout to delete what I don't want from one of the swatches and then just use the ordering. So again, uh, since I wanted the seat purple, I deleted the legs, which was the cutout from the purple swatch, put it on top of the pink, and I get this cool color combination. And you could even get more creative, so maybe I want the actual seat here in the middle to be um, a third color. I want it to be green. Well then, if you can't easily see where it is, you can always come back to one of these swatches. Like that's kind of why I picked this one. This one is really easy to see where the seat is compared to the, the other parts. And so you could use this to cut out the seat to use that as essentially your template to delete that from whatever you want so that it shows through. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so that's how to do the different color combinations. You kind of have to do them manually by using these cutouts in the PSD, but that's why I always save the PSD. So if I ever want to go back and make a custom version for myself with a couple colors, I have the cutout ready to go. So let me go back. <laughs> so that was like an aside. Let's say that I wasn't doing a color combination and I just want the white legs on all of the swatches because I just want something pretty universal that I can use for any save and just have all the colors ready. So I'm gonna, this is my paste swatch with the actual thing here. I'm gonna do a control A, control C to copy that. And I'm gonna close this out. Now I'm gonna do a file open. And I am going to select all of the swatches. I'm holding down shift to select them all. And it's gonna open them all up. And now we're gonna do another batch action, okay. I don't like to work on the gray ones because sometimes I feel like it's harder to tell, so I'm just going to open up another one. I'm going to do a, a quick paste to make sure that that is still pasting the right thing because you never want to want to want to run a batch and have it be the wrong thing. And you also want to do your swatch test like I did here before you do this step. So let me show you how to create the batch action and then I'll show you how to batch it. So I have this batch recoloring DDS folder for all of these. I have done a few different options over the times because sometimes I want to use a multiply or a soft light or there's different opacities. I did a plaid thing. Most of the time I'm just using this paste part over. Um, sometimes I had a different ones for depending on what the color was like maybe I wanted I don't know. <laughs> sometimes you just have different options. So basically all this action is is I paste it I merge the layers, I save it, and I close it. Okay, so let me show you that. Um, let me come to this folder, we'll add a new one. And I'm gonna call it example. Okay, so remember I already have copied the thing. I'm recording, I have this file selected. I'm gonna control V to paste it. Yep, that looks good. I'm gonna right click here and merge visible, or you could do merge layers or flatten image, it really doesn't matter, whatever you want, but we just need to get that so it works. I'm gonna do file, save, 
save and close and the close part's important stop recording now you might be saying well morgan we didn't do all of them that's the beauty of photoshop photoshop is going to be able to run this one action because it's the same steps on all of these different files and do it for us now what i can do is i am going to do file automate batch and notice that I still have all of my files open except for the one that I just did because I was recording it most of the time you'll have all of them open because you only have to record it once okay so file automate batch um, I have this set as long as you have it selected in here it should automatically select this but for example if I wanted to change to one of my different options or a different sub thing I would have to do that here okay source I want my opened files you could also do a folder but because my folder in this particular case had some extra files in it I'm just gonna do open files destination none because part of the batch thing just edits the ones but you could also um, probably do a different sort of version of the batch and not just save it um, and, and do something else. You might have to look up other tutorials. I've never done that, but mine is just set to none. And I do have it set to stop for errors. Sometimes I've made the mistake while this batch is running in the background, I'll be like multitasking and copy something else. And then I end up with some things totally random pasted on my things because of course the computer can only remember one copied thing at a time. Um, <laughs> so you have to make sure you don't copy anything while it's going, but sometimes it'll catch that you did that and it'll stop for errors. Um, okay, I think that's good. That's all you need to have set. Like I said, most of the time once this is all set, all I have to do is press okay and I don't even really pay attention to this when I do it. So I'm gonna press okay. And it's just gonna run through that paste action for all of the open files, which is really cool. Now it always starts at one, as you can tell it's counting up seven, eight, and then it always jumps back to 76 because that was the last open file. So while it's doing that, I can either go off and do something else, go grab some tea, grab a snack, or I could start loading in the swatches. So let me go ahead and do that. So I am good. I'm ready to load in these swatches. I'm going to come up to tools, color palette. Now this was something that I had to install based off of that download that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, this is the some of the actions. So this is for hair only. This is for other things like the chairs that I'm doing. I'm going to hit apply palette to package. And it says there are 11 swatches that are not part of this palette you're applying. Do you want to keep these swatches? Since I did a standalone, I'm going to say no. So now you have to click on one and then off and then again for it to fully like register that you deleted the swatch it was initially on. So I'm going to, with one select, I'm going to hit import. And there it is, ready to go. And you'll notice this. I mean, I'm talking through this, so it's almost done with this, but usually it only takes a few seconds for it to get a head start on you. And then you can just start hitting import, and I type the number in, three, and that's why I numbered them, because, okay, I'm on four, import four. Five, import five. And so you'll notice that Photoshop is already done, and I know that because nothing's open. And it just says Adobe Photoshop. So if you're not already preloading these in, that's what you're watching for for it to be done sometimes like my computer is pretty decent um, your computer might not be able to handle like studio doing its thing and Photoshop doing its thing at the same time so you might not be able to multitask and do them at the same time just you know see what your computer is able to handle so I'm gonna go ahead and finish importing these again I'm just hitting import typing in the number and work through those. There's a lot of swatches, so it takes a few minutes, and then I'll meet you back. All right, so I finished um, importing the last swatch, and I'm really happy with the way these turned out. Of course, as you load them in, you get to see all of the different colors, which there's just something satisfying as a berry simmer, and I'm sure it'd be the same I mean, regardless, to just see all of these popping in, like, yeah, I did that, and look at all the pretty colors. So one last thing that I like to do um, that isn't available here because of course this is base game but a lot of times on the thumbnail it has this little checkbox to put in the icon for the pack. I like to check that 
Um, and then another thing that you could choose to do, it's up to you, is change the name or the description. So sometimes I like to put um, like something like recolored by frolicking gnomes and noodles sorbet remix palette. Just like, I don't know, to put my myself in there. Some people also make a custom thumbnail with like their icon on it. Sometimes I do that if there's already like an icon here, but you'll notice this one's blank and I'm too lazy to go in game and like take a specific thumbnail picture. And some people like are religious and do that for all the swatches and I'm too lazy for that. If I did it, the most I would do is the first one because that's the one that shows up in the menu. And then the recolors just auto generate from the object itself. Self and I'm okay with that. So once you're all done and you're happy, you press save. And sometimes this takes a little while depending on what you're doing, especially walls take a really long time. And then you're done. And then you, if you come to your, I mean you can exit, but if you come to this file here, this is the thing you pop into your mods folder. I usually just copy paste it so I always have like a backup in here. And then if I ever need to edit it, I just double click this and it's going to open up Sims 4 Studio and I can go in and edit it. So of course you'll want to test that out before you share it or upload it to make sure that it looks good in game and works. Next up I'm going to be showing you guys a few other techniques for things that I've done with some of my recolors. Alright you guys, this is a quick little snippet of a cautionary tale to always check a test swatch before you fully batch it. Um, so when I was doing this chair, initially I thought, when I, when I tested it, I didn't like that this was still gray and I was like, okay, I want to change it. And initially in the swatch, I don't know if you can see here, this part I had left gray because I was just following the, the base color. I was following this swatch and so this part, I, I just deleted everything that was purple and left these two things gray. And so I saw this and thought, oh, that was what was causing the little gray things didn't even think about this piece here. I was satisfied that I was smart enough to know that that's what fixed it and didn't test it. And so now, as you can see, all of my files, I've already done the batch, have that gray swatch. And so it's essentially been permanently deleted. Like I would have to go back to the beginning and re do all the colors because I can't get the right color for that at this point. So cautionary tale, always make sure even if you're a thousand percent sure that it's what you want, you should test a swatch out before you run the batch action because you might be sorry like I am right now. So I did end up deciding to redo those swatches because it was going to bother me. Essentially all I need to do is make sure I select this middle gray part and delete it. But since I'm already having to redo everything else it's kind of that like peace of mind of okay well at least I don't have to do redo this and let me just make sure that that top part yeah um, so I always like having the color on here I'm sure I showed you this but to help me select the correct parts because when it's all white it's really hard to tell what I'm selecting um, so since I have deleted essentially everything on the bottom, um, let me show you what happens. If I were to open one of the swatches and try pasting this on top, it's not going to paste in the right spot because it's not the same size anymore. So. Um, just make sure that on the swatch you're going to paste, I like to zoom in super close to one of the corners. Um, in this case, I'm going to do the bottom corners because there's stuff in the top. And I usually just grab a white color and then my brush, I'm going to have to change to a just a basic brush. And I want to make sure that it's one tile, which it is, and I'm just going to come up here and give it just a very slight um, Color. So let me even show you. So um, you'll notice it's just barely slightly. Plus, a lot of times the textures don't even use the corner, but we're talking such a small little piece there that you're never going to notice. But that's going to allow us to paste this in, and now it snaps to the right position. All right. So I think originally I had planned to make a whole video, but I decided to just put in this quick segment. But if you guys are interested in more tips and techniques like this, let me know and I can definitely make like a follow-up video with more ideas. Um, but I just wanted to show you the technique that I use to 
I do this a lot with walls, but you could do it on other things where it's like, it's not so easy to figure out what you want to have the color. So you can see here on this brick, I really wanted all of them to have that little bit of a white wash. And so I want to show you the technique I use to create this look. And I'm trying to, when I go to create the paste part to put on them, like how do you select essentially all of that white stuff? Because if I just start coming in here, well it kind of works. But I want to show you an alternate. So one thing that I sometimes use is I come up to select and color range. And I select the color that I want. I don't know if it's just being slow, there it is. And so it's gonna select everything of that color and you can kind of keep trying to get the, the swatch you need. And then it's, you're gonna, basically anything that's white is what's selected and you can change the fuzziness to decide like how much of it you want. So maybe I want like that, right? So you might either copy that specifically if this is the swatch I want or maybe I'm doing something really cool with colors and I just want to use that as my selector so you can use some of the other techniques I did where I had multiple layers and used one layer to pick the selection and then actually pull the selection from something else but then I could do a control C yeah so when I paste that over you'll notice it's just the white stuff um, and so maybe I want it as normal like this maybe I wanted to do an overlay or soft light or maybe even color right you can play around with the different filters hue color dodge you can also play with opacity and get some different kind of cool looking looks with just that selection um, if you do end up deciding to do something more complex like screen and opacity is different then you'll need to set up a new paste action so that's what all of these are um, a lot of times I end up making these for one project and I may or may not use them again but like this has a paste in opacity 80% this is paste and multiply paste and soft light and it's the same idea except after you paste it just like I did here I pasted it and then I changed it to screen and opacity 75% then I would merge visible save it and stop recording so it's not too hard to make a different one based off of what you need so I hope that tip is helpful if you want to see more videos of different techniques or just kind of like a you know watch me recolor let me know and I'd be happily happy to make something like thank you so much for watching and if this video is helpful please give it a thumbs up and maybe even consider subscribing have a wonderful rest of your day happy simming and happy recoloring. Thank you.